Look, Paul, I- I've been generally mystified by how the rest of the NFL has treated Lamar Jackson this offseason. Why they don't want Lamar Jackson doesn't make any sense to me other than collusion that these owners need to be saved from themselves. They're mad at the Browns owner for giving the contract that he did to Deshaun Watson. I can't think of any other explanations. I do think every time that John Harbaugh, beginning at the end of the regular season, when every time John Harbaugh, the Ravens coach, talks, I do think you hear in his voice that he has no interest in coaching Lamar Jackson anymore, the way that he has talked about him. I think they've been giving you clues all along. So maybe that's why today a Ravens PR person interrupted Eric DaCosta, the team's GM, when he was asked about Lamar Jackson, but I'll let you decide of what what actually happened today on the Lamar Jackson front. This is let's go first to Eric DaCosta when he's being asked about Lamar Jackson. Yeah, so those are you know, I understand the need to ask those kind of questions. Uh I think just out of respect for the process, this is a draft luncheon and we're gonna try to keep as much of this discussion as we can to the draft, to the coming weeks, building the best football team we can build. So I understand those questions. I think we've spoken about this situation probably five different times this spring in various different press conferences and such. So we're going to try to just kind of defer to those questions and move forward to the draft. That was Eric DaCosta? Huh? Cox? Okay. Huh? So that's the GM basically saying, hey, and I kind of get the GM in this situation saying, we're having a press conference today about what we're going to do with the draft. Now, of course, you can't do anything in the NFL (laughs) that doesn't revolve around your quarterback and the future of your franchise quarterback. Yeah. All right, so now I guess another question was then potentially asked after this warning shot was fired by DaCosta, and here's the Ravens PR guy saying, okay, we're not doing that. With respect to the this being about the draft and everything, just with the Lamar stuff that's going on. Hey, guys. Are you, guys, are you all that? looking at quarterbacks? Out, out, out. This is about the draft. Just move off the, the Mark Young question. Let's just move. We're, we're, we're not going to answer one more question. Okay? Mm-hmm. About the draft. Are you looking at quarterbacks differently because of the situation's going on? Yeah, you know, I don't think we really are. So that's the PR guy interceding there as a question. He is tried. I mean, he tried to, to deflect the questions. You know, sometimes the Bill Belichick school of press conferences don't work for everybody. Right. Doesn't really work for Baltimore. You're going to get those questions. Just answer the question. I mean, simply put, like just, yes, we're we're not here to address that question. We're not here to talk about the new chicken fingers that are being served in the concourse. So, but everybody wants to know about the chicken fingers. Everyone wants to know about Lamar Jackson. And it's a question. Doesn't gonna, that, the questions are going to stop once you answer the question. And you, you mentioned Belichick. You really think Bill Belichick needs a PR person to stand up for him or cut people off or he can't handle himself? Because Eric Acosta now, to use Michael Malone's word, which I wouldn't use if I wasn't on the air right now, he looks soft. He looks really soft. I don't need you telling me. Like, if we're at a press conference right now, I don't need you stepping in and be like, hey, Joe Joe doesn't know what he's doing. Joe can't handle himself. Hey, cool, PR guy. How about you just shut up over there? I'll take care of this. Soft, man. That's soft. I think a little crisis management. You think would Belichick have would let some PR oh, no. guy? No, he'd step no. up. He'd step up to him real quick. We're he'd on to his, Cincinnati. He put his dog in the. In we're the on to the draft. I mean, right. Just answer the question. Again, it's okay, the, that's what people want to know. They the, don't care about what you're picking. Who you're picking at 22? The way they that Harbaugh, care. the way that Harbaugh has talked about, the way that their coach has talked about their franchise quarterback, and the fact that they couldn't sign their franchise quarterback has told you all along what their opinion of Lamar Jackson is. So while I appreciate the Baltimore media arm here trying to say hey and asking the questions that people are interested in. You don't need to ask the question because the Ravens themselves have already answered the question by allowing Lamar's contract situation to get where it is today, where he's on the non-exclusive tender. And now look at the rest of these owners going, no, we don't need a 26-year-old former MVP of this league at quarterback. That's silly. The most important position in this league. The only way really to truly win in this league anymore. Nobody's going to point at Tyler Huntley and Anthony Brown, who I have they are utmost apparently. respect for. But that is that is the the two. They're going to have a quarterback competition in Baltimore. I mean, is that what the plan is? Lamar wants a trade. He wants a deal. Who's going to trade for him? At some point, you've got to cut bait on this one. I'm like, sorry. There's got to be a team that leads Lamar Jackson. There's and meeting the price of the Baltimore Ravens isn't. There's no price to be met anymore. He wants out. 
the Ravens, as you've said, have sent up all the signal flares saying, yeah, we're kind of done with this too. So just be done with it and make it happen. It was not even two years ago that the or three years ago that the 49ers traded three first round picks just to get Trey Lance. Do you think he's sitting? I mean, if they don't get a deal done, do you think Jackson sits this year? I do. I do. I think he pills a levy on Bell and just says, I'm not I'm not playing. Man. I wouldn't play. They don't want him. Now, right, they now, don't, but now what about, I now what I would, I would do if I'm Lamar Jackson, I'm gonna hire an agent. Because I yeah. think it was fine out of school. I think it was fine. To have your mom run the numbers and and you can get the thing notarized by anybody and their you know and their mother, but I do think I, there comes a certain point and I think now is that point. He needs an agent because he needs to go and get a deal done. That's what he needs to do. Think about it in the terms of the Canes, right? Sebastian Ajo a few years ago is a restricted free agent. His agent is buddies with the Canadians GM. The Canadians GM then serves up a saucy contract for him that ends up getting Tom Dundon to finally do the right thing when it when it came by Sebastian Ajo. So at some point, you do need somebody to be your advocate. And it's pretty clear he can't be his own advocate on this one and his mom can't be his own his advocate on this one. He needs to go out and play the game the right way now. I think he needs to go get an agent. Yeah, I'm standing side by side with you on that one. There was an article, I believe ESPN.com, a couple of weeks ago about the process, how Derek Carr ended up with the uh, Saints and how the two guys that Carr basically are the ride or die with were with him the entire way at Fresno State and had, and, oh no, not Derek Carr, sorry, Aaron Judge. Okay. Aaron Judge's agents, ride or die with him, he stuck with them, felt family with them, they connected with him, did all the right things, were incredibly transparent. That's the kind of, I think, confidant that Lamar Jackson needs to step away because obviously he was looking to family for help, and while they were being that guiding light, he probably needs something similar to that, but in this age of cynicism that we live in right now, that's really hard to find. 